So welcome back everybody. Now we are finally, finally moving in to chapter eight. Now chapter eight is split into three sections, right? Which we are very familiar with. We've already seen before how to calculate FIFO for periodic inventory. Now this time, there those three exact sections are going to be split here as well. 8.1 is going to be FIFO, 8.2 is LIFO, and lastly, the 8.3 is going to be moving average instead of waiting, weighted average, okay? So we're going to be re-looking and revisiting these exact concepts, but seeing how each one applies differently for the different types of inventory methods that we're keeping track of the inventory, okay? But the idea still remains the same. The first purchases that you buy the, are usually going to be the first purchases that you that are um, sold first. Okay. Now, of course, um, with a PowerPoint, it's going to be a definitely a lot smaller in in terms of you know how much space I have. So um, I'm going to go ahead and expose to you guys first what the inventory worksheet actually looks like before we begin. So again. Uh, because it will start, you know, coming together as soon as we realize what sections we're going to be looking at. So here's the inventory worksheet that we're going to be working on. This is for perpetual inventory. So as you can see, it's just nine columns, or I'm sorry, not nine columns. Um, it's 12 columns, right? And it's all going down completely downwards. So in this case, there's no subsections that we need to focus on. All we need to focus on is three sections at one time. All right. Section one, which is the first uh, three columns, is going to be anything dealing with your cost of goods sold. Okay. Then the next six is going to be the middle section, which is going to be dealing with your inventory purchases. So when you make your purchases of inventory, this is exactly where you're gonna place it in. It's going to be your inventory workspace, okay? And then the last three columns is going to be your inventory on hand. Now, as we remember, right, when we make purchases of inventory, it directly goes straight into inventory. So this is another sense of an easy way to actually um, break down our transaction and realize what is going on, okay? So again, uh, section one is the cost of goods sold. Section two is your inventory purchases or your workspace. And section three is going to be your inventory on hand. How I'm going to teach you on how to fill it out is going to be based on going moving from the left column all the way to the right column. Okay, if we make a purchases that doesn't deal with our first column, that deals directly to our middle column, and then we proceed to the right side. Okay, so every step that we're going to do, we're going to start from left. We're going to go through each column, left, the first column, second column, and third column for every single transaction that we encounter. Okay, now that's just a little overview of what you will be looking at. But for now, let's go ahead and teach you how to start filling out the inventory worksheet. Okay, so keep this in mind. I will show you how to fill out the entire worksheet when we dive into our exercises. So first things first, let's go ahead and dive into our PowerPoint. So once again, 8.1 is going to be taking a look at perpetual inventory, but we're going to be looking at the first in first out costing method. Okay. So of course with this, we talked about what the um, different costing methods are. So once again, first in first out, right? Typical idea is like a grocery store. LIFO, once again, is where you sell products, right? Usually the last ones are going to be the first to go out. So anything that has to do with electronics usually typically would fall into the LIFO category. And then we have weighted slash moving average. Now, weighted average is specifically for periodic inventory because you don't do it till the very end. You gather everything up and you go ahead and you determine um, the average towards the end. When we go ahead and learn 8.3, either tomorrow, you're gonna see the average move along 
every purchase that you make and every transaction that you make. So that one, you uh, make sure that you understand that perpetual inventory, it's going to be moving average, okay? You're going to see the average move along, okay? And it's really, really cool. And then lastly, of course, specific ID. Um, it's an inventory costing method, but we do not learn it, okay? So let's go ahead and dive right into the example. So here, once again, we, take, we took a look at all of these um, formulas before, right? The first five, right, it's exactly identical to periodic um, inventory, right? We got to figure out what our total quantity is, right? And what our uh, total purchase price is, which is your quantity times your purchase price, or I'm sorry, your per unit cost or your unit cost, right? To get you a total of your um, purchase price. Then of course, your total cost is going to be your purchase price plus your freight, right? We've learned this before. Same thing here. A cost per item is the same thing. Your total cost divided by your quantity to give you your cost per item. Now, here's where it becomes a little different. When we deal with our cost of goods sold, right? Or in this case, our goods available. Our goods available is going to be our total cost of number one, okay? Plus our total cost of number two to give us our goods available, all right? So, of course, these ones are going to be a little more confusing if I explain it to you, but it makes more sense once you apply the actual um, concept together, right? Especially when we're dealing with our goods available, right? We have that little section for the inventory on hand, and that's exactly what we're going to have. We're going to constantly have some kind of running balance to let us know how much we have on inventory in, on hand, right? Cost of goods sold is going to be, right, your quantity times the cost per item, and that's going to give you your total cost of goods sold, right? So in our section for our cost of goods sold, that's where we will calculate it, okay? And then everything else, ending inventory. You will always know what your ending inventory is at all times because every purchase that we make, you add, you add up your inventory items every every uh, item you sold, you're going to subtract those items out. So therefore, you will always have and will always know the ending balance at any given time, okay? This is just a generic formula just so that you can, um, you know, be able to, to, to see, right? You're going to have your inventory on hand, total cost. You're going to subtract your cost of goods um, sold to get your ending balance, okay? Pretty straightforward in regards to calculating. So let's go ahead and dive into our first scenario. So here we have a few things that we're going to be looking at, right? And I'll break it down one at a time. And I believe I do color code this. So you guys are in luck, okay? So the first one that we're going to be looking at is going to be on June 1st, you made a purchase of 100 toys for $1.25 each with a freight costing you $25. Now, as you remember, first thing first is when we understand our purchases of inventory, we got to journalize it. Okay, I bought toys. Here it is. It's everything's going to be combined. So the purchase price and the freight to give us a grand total of 150 um, for my purchases of toys. And I place it on an account. So there it is, 150, right? So that's just journalizing it for recognizing that we made a purchase. Now, we're going to go straight into our inventory worksheet, okay? So notice is that I zeroed in, right, to just only my cost of goods sold section and my inventory workspace section, right? Because I as I remembered I'm telling you, I obviously, the PowerPoint's a little too small to fit all the squares in here, but for now, let's just understand that we made a purchases. So, did we deal with the cost of goods sold? No. So section one is done. Section two, did we make a purchase? Yes, we did. So here we are, 100 items, costing me $1.25 each with a freight of 25. So let's go ahead and apply our formula. What's my purchase price? 
125. What's my total cost? 150. 150. What is my total cost per item? A dollar fifty, right? Boom. There we are. And the next step, obviously, is going to be the, to fill out your inventory on hand. So you're going to transfer the information directly into your inventory on hand. But for now, that's good. As that's good enough. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this and make this my batch yellow. Okay. So now we have the next scenario. On June third, you sold fifty five toys at five dollars each. So once again, we recognize that we need to complete transaction number one, which is what happened at, at during that transaction. We'd sold something. And then the second thing that we have to recognize is how much did it cost us to sell those toys? And that's exactly what we're going to figure out right here. Okay. So now we're going to apply it to the, the, the section number one. Did we deal with selling our items? Yes, we did. We sold 55 items, so I put my quantity right there. What's my cost per item going to be? Five dollars. No, that's the selling price. How much did it cost me to sell it? Oh, one twenty-five. A dollar twenty-five, right? We're gonna recognize that we only have one batch and one batch only. So in this case, straight away, I already calculated my cost per item. I'm gonna take that number and I'm gonna place it there, and now I'm gonna solve for my total cost of goods sold. So what is my total cost of goods sold? 82.50, okay? Now, this is where I was telling you, this is how um, we get to take a look at how we can keep track of our inventory, right? So go ahead and place it into your inventory workspace. So here, I recognize I sold. 55 items at 82.50, right? So that's my first section. I'm done with my first section. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my middle section. I'm gonna go ahead and subtract those numbers out, okay? So simple as this, what is 100 minus 55? 45. 45, okay? And what is 150 minus 82.50? Right there, 67.50. And what are you gonna do? I'm going to I'm going to highlight that number because this is belongs to batch yellow. Okay? And then I think you eliminate the that other batch earlier, okay? So then what has happened on Okay, so let, let me let, let's go back. So here in this transaction, I took away 45 because I sold it, right? So this second yellow line right here is giving me my ending balance. That means I have 45 items remaining, costing me at $67.50. And we know how much cost per item that is, right? Cost per items will never change unless, you know, there's a discount or whatever it is. But in this case, I'm only, I'm only showing you what happens when we just purchase it. So here we are. We have 45 items left, costing me a total of $67.50, right? Which costs me a total of $1.50 per item, okay? So then let's see what happened next. On June 5th, you made another purchase of 100 toys at $1.28 with the freight costing you 26 okay? Here's the journal. So let's go ahead and plug it in here. We go back to our inventory worksheet, right? We know we didn't sell anything yet, so we're done with section one. So now we're back to section two. Section two, we recognize that we made another purchase, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put in my 100 items that cost me $1.28 and my freight was 26 so what's my purchase price here? $128. Mm-hmm. And my total cost? Okay. $1.54 for the cost per item. Okay. Here is my second batch that I purchased, right? If we're looking at FIFO, my yellow batch came first, right? So I'm going to associate this second batch with another color. So I'm going to choose red so... You know, it contrasts as you can for surely see it. So for this kind of 
mentality, right? We know yellow batch came first. And we know that the red batch came second. Okay? So then we, we can transfer it to our inventory work, inventory on hand, which it makes it a lot easier to do. Okay? But for now, I have two batches. I have the yellow batch for 45, and I have a new red batch of 100. Okay? So now, what has happened next on June 10? Right? We made an additional purchase of 100 toys, costing me at $1.30 with the freight costing me 27. So just as before, right, we're gonna work into our middle section, which is the purchases or the inventory worksheet. And we recognize that we have a third batch, right? And I colored it green, okay? Just so that you can, you're able to see the difference between them. So now I have three batches, my yellow batch for 45, my red batch for 100, and my third and last batch that I purchased is going to be in green, okay, for the 100 items, okay? Everyone good with me so far? Yeah. Yes. Okay? So then, what happened on June 12th? You sold 120 toys for $5. Okay. So here, let's take a look at our batches. We sold a total of 120. Do we have enough for our, red, our yellow batch? No, but that means we can eliminate that yellow batch because we know we're gonna take that whole entire 45. And then whatever remaining that we need to take out from our next batch is going to be equal to 120. So 120 minus 45 gives you 75, right? We need to take 75 more to give us a grand total of 120. So here, we're taking a look at that. We're gonna eliminate our first batch, which is the yellow one, right? We're gonna take our first batch of a yellow. We're gonna transfer this information here. The next batch I'm gonna be taking out from would be our red batch, which cost me $1.54 each. So I'm gonna plug in those numbers here, right? First, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eliminate the yellow batch. So here it is, I plugged in my numbers and I know for a fact, without having to actually truly calculate it, right? I know for a fact that 45 items is gonna cost me a grand total of 67.50. So now that I've placed it in my cost of goods sold section, I'm going to eliminate it and recognize that my yellow batch is now zero. Okay? So I'm gonna actually eliminate it directly out of my inventory worksheet just so that you can see where these numbers came from and you could see where the work is. Okay, so in this case, I eliminated my yellow batch. Okay? Now I need to take 75 more. Where am I gonna take the 75 from? your red batch. So I plugged in my cost per item to get a total of 115.50, right? And now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing I did to my red, uh, to my yellow batch, right? I'm gonna eliminate it right out from my inventory worksheet, right? I subtract 75 and subtracted the 115.50. And now I'm gonna get remaining from my red batch 25. Okay, right, 75 minus 100 gives you 25. And I took 154 minus the 115.50 to give me a grand total of eight, uh, 38.50 left. Okay, and then we're given the ending balance, right? So in this case, uh, just to make sure that we end our balances, we need to sum up our total. So right now, we need to solve for our total that we, that we sold, which was 120, which we just added up our total numbers to get a total of $183 to sell those 120 items, okay? We were also given that at the end of the uh, 15th, we should have a total of 125, which we do, right? We have our red batch and our green batch. We add those numbers up together, you're going to get your total ending balance to be 195.50.
Same thing here, if you, to if you want to, you can do this as well. Total up your cost of goods sold. So in this case, I sold in grand total for these two weeks, right, from June 1st all the way to June 15th. I sold a total of 170 items, costing me a total of $265.50, okay? Now, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Do you guys need to complete a conversion entry? No. 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 Why not? Okay, Nicole, uh, explain it again. Because when you have all the information on this inventory form. Okay, Alan, what what was your what were you gonna say? I was gonna say that. Plus, also when we uh, journalize it, we have all that information also. Yes. Okay. When we do our conversion entry, what are we converting? Exactly. And in this case, my inventory is already inventory. Right? When we purchase everything, we immediately associate it as inventory already. Under periodic inventory, we associate it as an expense first. And then when we solve our inventory worksheet, we convert the information into inventory. In this case, I already have everything as inventory. I already know what I calculated my cost of goods sold. So everything that we have is already calculated, so there is absolutely no need to do a conversion entry, okay? Because we already have our ending balance. We already have our cost of goods sold, right? We never made a purchase of expense. So in this case, that's it. When you are done with your worksheet, you are done with your worksheet, okay? Any questions so far? Okay. So of course, I'm, uh, of course, we have to also see what happens when we have beginning inventory. So when we're continuing with our inventory worksheets, right, we can't assume that we always are going to start at zero. We'll always have some kind of beginning balance. So in this case, I'm continuing to my inventory, and I've already recognized that as of June 15, we had a total of 125 items costing me a total of $195.50, right? So from our previous section here, we have a green batch of 100 and we have um, 25 from our red batch. So what we're gonna essentially do first is when we dive right into our inventory worksheet, first thing we're gonna do is we gotta throw in our beginning balance in here. Exactly how we purchased it, right? We purchased our red batch first, we also purchase our green batch second. So in this case, I'm keeping them separate. I'm not going to add them together because that's moving average, right? We don't we we do care about what each um, batch that we purchase and costing them at a specific price. So in this case, we're going to keep my red as 25 or at um, red first and then green batch second. Okay, so here you go. My, it's still totaling up to 125 in quantity, and it's still totaling up to my 195.50. Okay, so that's the first thing you got to do is recognize what batches came first in your beginning balances, okay, from your previous worksheet, and carry it over to the next worksheet. So identical to how periodic inventory was, right? Um, when we had our inventory items, right? We, can, we brought it from our first, from our uh, previous worksheet and carried it over to the next one, okay? So then, what has happened next on June 18? Perfect. So there's our idea there. We sold 90 items, right? In this case, our two batches, do we have enough to cover 90? Correct. So we're going to eliminate our first batch first, which is the 25 um, items there. We're going to grab our cost per items right here, right? So here I know for a fact that my 25, right, items from my red batch 
should still cost me $1.54, which I get a grand total of, right? We already know that for a fact that it should be $38.50. Once again, I'm going to eliminate it from my worksheet to get me a grand total of zero for my red batch, right? So I don't have red at all, okay? All I have left now is my green batch of 100, right? I... It's the only batch I have left, so I know for a fact that it's $1.57. We're going to calculate that to get our total cost of goods sold here, which should be a total of $102.05, okay? Once again, you're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to take it directly out, and then now my new green batch or my updated green batch should reflect that I should have 35 items left remaining in my green batch, costing me at a total of $54.95, okay? And it's still gonna be $1.57. And here, I've also calculated my total of the items that I sold, which was 90, costing me a total of $140.55, okay? So exactly just like this, that's exactly how I'm gonna um, show you how I could properly take it out, okay? So everyone good with me so far? Yeah, yes. Okay. Now, next thing happened on June 21st. We purchased another batch of 100 toys at $1.32. Bless you. Okay. With a freight of 26. So just like we've done many times before, we're going to add our inventory in here. So in this case, what's my total purchase price? Hundred thirty-two, making my total cost to become one fifty-eight, and my cost per item is going to be dollar fifty-eight. And once again, I'm going to go ahead and make a color association with this one. It's going to be blue. Okay. Then we come here on June twenty-fifth. We end up purchasing another hundred toys at a dollar thirty-five. Okay. So once again, I plug those numbers in, and I'm gonna also color code it with another color. So I decided to use orange, right? Because we have used red, right? And we have used yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to make it a little different just so that I don't confuse myself on which batches came first and et cetera, et cetera. So now in this exact order, my green came first, my blue came second, and my orange came last, okay? So now our next scenario here says that on June 27th, we sold 120 toys. So with that being said, how much from the green are we going to take out from and how much from the blue are we going to take out from? Everything from the green and then uh, 35 from the blue. Correct. So here... I've already associated that my green is going to cost me $1.57, which we know for a fact is going to be a total of the $54.95, which, once again, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate that by showing my calculations that this is what happened. I sold, so I need to get rid of $35 from my inventory, and therefore eliminate my green batch. Okay? Then... Okay, we have our blue batch at 158, which is going to cost me a grand total of 134.30, which once again, we're going to go ahead and eliminate 85 from the 100 to give us a new ending balance in my blue batch to be 15 items. And it's going to cost me a grand total of $23.70 left. All right which I also summed up my cost of goods sold, right? I made sure that I tallied it up to make to equal 120, which is going to cost me a grand total of $189.25 to sell. Okay. Okay, so now we're down to our last two batches, right? Our blue batch of 15 and our orange batch of 100. All right. Last but not least, on June 28th, we sold an additional 65 toys on June 18th. So there go, therefore, 
I'm going to eliminate the 15, which is my blue batch. So that's going to be automatically gone. Okay. I know for a fact that it's already been calculated, so I can just eliminate it right away. And I know that I don't have that uh, blue batch anymore. Last but not least, I'm going to calculate my remaining 50 items from my orange batch to give me a total of $81. I'm going to subtract it out to give me my ending balance in my orange to be now 50, right? And if you guys go back to the scenario, it should have given you your given um, information was that at the end of June 30th, you should have 50 toys remaining. And in this case, yes, I do. And I've also calculated my totals uh, for my cost of goods sold. So that is exactly how we do our perpetual inventory, okay? We're constantly updating our inventory worksheet at all times. Every purchase that we make, we increase our inventory. Every sale that we make, we decrease our inventory, okay? Now for this exercise, for the first exercise, I want you to practice utilizing these, um, you know, minus numbers so you can keep track of your inventory and know where these numbers are coming from, okay? Once you get you, you know, progress on to the next time. So after the first, uh, first couple days, right, the next time we do our inventory worksheet where I'm going to go ahead and drop the, uh, the, the minuses and I'm going to directly take it off of my inventory on hand, okay? And you're going to see how, you know, it's, it could be either much easier or it could also be a lot, um, I guess, a uh, better way of looking at it, right? I need to teach you how these calculations come first and then we will, you know, find another technique to, to make it uh, a little more easier, okay? So any questions so far? Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and dive right into our very, very first exercise, okay? So here we are, my inventory worksheet. I'm going to make it a little bigger. There we go. So first things first is we're going to be taking a look at Chapter 8.1, Perpetual Inventory, FIFO Method, okay? So here's question number one. Okay, your inventory method is perpetual inventory, and it is FIFO, okay? So that means we're only focusing on first in, first out. So on May 5th, we purchased 1,000 units at $3 each on an account with a freight costing you 100 So inventory worksheet. So here it is, right? We have all 12 columns, right? First thing you're going to recognize is you need to recognize the date. So it's May 5th, right? We didn't sell anything, so we're going to skip right over the first three columns, right? If you notice, each column is labeled. I'm going to skip my cost of goods sold column and go straight into my inventory purchases um, column. So I purchased 1,000 items costing me $3 each with a freight of, a, of 100. So here, what is going to be my total purchase price, 3000 okay? What else? What's my total cost? 3100 3, And what is my cost per item? Okay, we're going to take our total cost of 3100 3, divided by 1000 to give you $3.10. Now, here is where it gets tricky because in periodic inventory, we're able to pull our formula down all the way through our worksheet. In this case, we cannot do that. Okay? Why? It's because we have another contributing factor. We have our cost of goods sold. So that means every transaction that we deal with, we may or may not have to add our total quantities or we may have to subtract them. So in this case, we cannot apply the formula all the way down. 
all right? This one's gonna be, you have to work every formula for every single transaction that you do, okay? So now that I completed my middle section, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this information into my inventory on hand, okay? So once again, I now have a thousand items costing me $3.10. So this right here is a formula that you can apply. It's going to be my quantity times my cost per item. And this one, I can apply this formula all the way down, okay? Now in this case, what color do I want to associate this batch with? Any color, any color. Yellow. Yellow, okay. So we're gonna go with yellow. So that's our first batch right there, okay? Um, if you wanna highlight this one too, that's up to you. Um, I'll go ahead and do it for this class so we can keep track of where um, our transactions are coming from, okay? So then let's go ahead and see what has happened next. On May 7th. We sold 550 units at $10 each. Okay, good. We sold 550 units, um, $10 each. So back to my inventory worksheet. It is now May 7th. Okay, we're on line two now. Did we sell something? Yes, we sold 550 items. Now, in this case, I'm not solving for my selling price. I'm solving for how much it cost me to sell those items. So in this case, what is going to be my cost per item? 310. 310. Now, it's up to you. If you are going to be utilizing the inventory worksheet in the inventory on hand, be sure you don't delete it. Okay, if you're cell referencing everything, you don't delete anything that's on the worksheet. How are we gonna eliminate it? We're just going to just update the numbers, okay? Because I've already applied the formula here. I'm gonna go ahead and cell reference this right here from an inventory on hand worksheet, okay? And apply it here that I it was 310, okay? Now, how much did it cost me to sell all 550 items? 1705 and once again I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate it right here okay because I sold it right I completed section one now I'm moving on to section two I sold 550 items right and it cost me a total of 10 or sorry 1705 okay so from here I'm gonna go ahead and solve all right so what is 100? In this case, because I've associated negative already, plus my negative 550. How much should be my total ending inventory? 450. 450, right? Same thing here. You're going to do the same exact association here. We're going to take my uh, 31. We're going to, in this case, add, because it's a negative number, 1705. And what should we get? Right? And this, because this is my new yellow batch, right? I'm going to go ahead and highlight this yellow so you know that that's my new batch now. And what you're going to do here is we're going to go up to my quantity and we're going to update it. So I no longer have a thousand. How much do I have? 450. 450. If I enter my if I press enter, right, it's gonna automatically calculate my 450 times my 310 to give me my exact number of 1395. And this is where, if you utilize this method, right, you, you your calculations here, these should always match at one time. So this is a perfect way to keep track of your inventory, but to also make sure that you're calculating everything correctly. So that's how I'm gonna be associating it, but this, is what I mean by if when we move on to the next uh, couple of times that we do the same exercise, I'm going to show you 
to not utilize the middle worksheet and take it directly off of your inventory on hand, okay? But in this case, I just make sure, because like if I post my answers and you see the whole middle section's blank and you see all this is all the updated to the individual, how in the world do you know exactly what happened, okay? So for now, this is just uh, showing you how this works, okay? All right, everyone go with me so far? Okay. So then let's see what has happened next. May 10. What happened on May 10? Buy 450 units at 325 on the pounds. This is great for selling stock. All right. So once again, I'm going to skip the line. It is now May 10. And we bought 850 units at 325 with a freight costing me 75. So 850, 325 at 75. We have those in one pounds. Thank you. Just need to move it over a bit. So this was 850, 820, uh, 325. And then 75. Thank you. All right. So once again, what's my total purchase price? 2,763.50. Good. Plus my freight to give me a total cost of? 28.37.50. 28.37.50. And lastly, what is my cost per item going to be? 3.33824. All right. So we have a nasty number. So that means we have to start using our equal round formulas. Okay. But now that I have this, right, what color do you want to associate this batch with? Pink. Pink. Okay. Let's see. Is this pink okay? Sure. Oh, let's go a little darker. Let's go a little darker. It does seem more like a peach. Oh, let me see. Okay. Well, there you go. Yes, a peach pink color. Okay. And what are we going to do? We're going to move it right into our inventory on hand. So we have now 850 costing me 3.3824, right? And our formula is there. And we're going to highlight this to this nice coral pink color, okay? So if you have this, which you can do, you can create a little tally column at the very bottom of this worksheet so you know how much items you have on hand at all times, right? That's up to you if you want to do it. But in this case, it's not necessary because I'm going to be constantly purchasing and I'm going to be constantly taken away. So we can always solve for that at the very end of the, um, very end of the period, right? So I'm not going to do, do that yet, but I will do it at the very end, right? So now that I've completed my purchases, I've completed section one, section two, section three, there it is. I have a new second batch of pink of 850 items, okay? So then, what has happened next? Say that again. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, so you're just reading the scenario. Perfect. May 12th, you sold another 300 and... 60 items, okay? So here I am. It is now May 12th. We sold 360. Now let's take a look. Does my yellow batch cover all 360 items? Yes. Yes, it does. So with that being said, how much is it going to cost me for my yellow batch per item? 310. So therefore, since it's a rounded number, we don't need to do equal round. So what is going to be my total cost of goods sold? 1116 11, even. Now you can do this if it makes it easier for you to see, right? Since I know for a fact that my uh, yellow batch is here, I can actually pull that information down, right? And I can go ahead and eliminate my 360, so then you could see your calculation row right here, right? What is 450 minus 
360. 90, right? And I'm gonna gonna highlight this because if you wanna highlight the whole thing, whatever, as long as you know that this is yellow batch, I'm just gonna only highlight um, this one just because that's my work that I'm doing right here. So 90, so I'm gonna pull once again the information from above, subtract out this 1116. So what is my total ending balance for my batch? 279, okay? And because I have this information, let's go ahead and eliminate it from our batch here. So what is 450 minus 360? 90, right? We've already solved it right here. You don't need to do the calculations twice. So you could just easily see that you've already did the calculation. It should be 90. And once okay, you do... I got paused for a second. Hold on. So once we have the 450 on the quantity, how did you... How did you get the 1395? That's oh. from up here. Because the total of the 450 should be 1395. Okay, so here, let's go back to our yellow batch. If I have 450, right, how much is my total cost of my 450 items? 1395. I just simply just pulled the information from right above and down here. Just so then I can actually see my physical calculation of taking my 450 minus my 360 to give me my 90. Yeah, you, you see this? So all I did was I just pulled the information down so I can actually see my actual physical um, physical ending balance of 450, subtracting the 360 to give you 90. So I highlight the whole thing in yellow so then you can make your association there, okay? So this number came from the original cost of my remaining balance of the 450. And if I eliminated 360, right, I'm left with 90. 90 is what's left. Yes. So I type in 90 here. Boom, my calculation should bring me a total of the 279 right there. Yes, okay, because this is going to be our inventory at hand that we have. This is my ending balance right here. I'm always going to know how much I have at the end of the day, which in this case should be whatever 850 plus 90 is. Okay. Yeah, it's 90. So the quantity left in the yellow is the 450... Minus the 360, right? What costing method am I doing? Um, trifle. So, yes. If you sold something, which batch are you going to take from? The 450. The 450 or the yellow batch. Okay. So I probably got the 90. Okay, I'm good. Okay. Okay. So now that we updated our inventory on hand, what has happened next? We sold, 600. we sold another 600 units on May 15. So here, May 15, we sold, what was it? 600. We sold 600, okay? Now let's take a look at our batches. We have two batches, one for 90 and one for 850. So in this case, we need to divide our 600 into whatever amounts that we have up here. We only have 90 left from our bat yellow batch. So we need to solve for whatever 600 minus 90 is to give us our total that we need to take out from our pink batch. Okay, I'm gonna add these up so then I know at all times that this right here, that I know 
for a fact that this is that we sold a total of 600 and I'm going to highlight that just so I know that's a calculation. Okay. So of course, if that's the calculation, this is going to be this plus this. Okay. So first things first, right? We have to eliminate our yellow batch of 90, right? We already know the calculations, but I'm just going to do it here for show, right? That we subtracted out to 79. And right here, since I'm, my batch right here is already yellow, I could go ahead and demonstrate that if I pull this 90 out, what should be my remaining balance? Zero. And if you want to highlight this to be yellow once again, so you know for sure that this is um, what you sold, there you go. Okay. So if I sold um, 50 items for 279, what is my total balance now? Zero. It's still zero. Okay. So therefore, now that I eliminated that, I can go ahead and update my inventory saying, I no longer have my yellow batch anymore. Okay, I type in zero, boom, it calculated as my a balance to be zero. Okay, so now all I have left is indeed my pink left. So in this case, how much per cost per item is my pink batch? $3.34. Yes. Okay. Because it's not a nice number, I'm going to go ahead and apply my equal round formula. Multiply those two numbers together, right? Comma two. So what is my total cost of goods sold for selling 510 of those items? 23.71 and 40 cents. 20, whoa. Okay, remember, don't round your numbers too early because you could get those errors as well. And maybe, I don't know what you to multiply it by. Yeah, no, I, I, I added an 8 or something somewhere. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. So once again, if it makes sense to you, go ahead and pull this information down, right? Pull that 850 down. And then eliminate your 510. And then tell me... What is my ending balance going to be in my pink batch? How much quantity should I have left? 340. 340. And once again, I'll just highlight this whole thing so you guys can know this is from the pink batch. Okay, I think it was uh, this one. Sure. <laughs> sure. I think that's right. Okay, there you go. So, once again, I'm going to pull my information from the pink batch up here, right? This is what I started out with. I'm going to subtract out my 170250. So, what should I have remaining? 330. Oh, I mean, uh, 1135. 1135. So, then... Can you wait a second so I could try to catch up my spreadsheet because I... Trying to watch you and put the information in, and I feel like I'm getting really confused going back and forth. Okay, so a strong recommendation for my class is I'd rather you sit and watch first and then do the ex exercise separately because it is hard because I can't I we I can't assume that you can you have multiple screens to be able to do watch me and also do the worksheet at the same time so. You know, general rule of thumb is either complete the exercise beforehand before the class or do the exercise with me after you watched me for the first time. That's just usually um, that helps the students a lot better instead of having to do watch, listen, watch, listen, watch, listen, enter in everything because you're, you like I said, you just said it yourself, you can get confused along the way because you're listening while putting in for information in and then trying to figure out where I am in the worksheet. So that's just a strong recommendation for you. So with you on our worksheet. I'm sorry? 
I thought you were having us go along with you on our work. Team. That's 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 what we're supposed to be doing. But like I said, because we're doing online, I can't assume that you have three. You have multiple monitors. Okay, so um, I'll go ahead and slow it down for you. So here um, we have eight fifty, right? We sold 510 items. So now we have a remaining of 340 items. Okay. Right here, we just pulled the information down from above. All right. We've already calculated our cost of goods sold. So now we're just calculating our totals here. Right. You can go ahead. I'm I'm lost on that whole equation. I'll just try to catch up on the next one. Don't forget. Okay. Um, I don't mean to dis discourage you, but let's. If you need to take a second, I'm. That's exactly what I'm supposed to be here for. So, let's go back to this equation, because there shouldn't be anything confusing when you're just when you're subtracting the numbers this 850 where did we get this 850 from each batch mm -hmm. which is our only batch right how many did we sell i'm still trying to get to the 600 so we took the 90 from the yellow and then the 510 from the other batch, right? We only have two batches, our yellow batch and our peach batch. If we eliminated our right. yellow batch... The yellow one, the other one would be the peach one. Correct. Oh, if you need to highlight these so you know which batches these come from, go ahead and do so. So if you, if you, can, if you can associate that this is from the yellow batch, right? The yellow batch is this one. So therefore, if we eliminated my yellow batch, what do I have left? I only have my peach batch left. So in this case, I have to take it out from that peach batch and I need to get a total of 600 that I sold. If I've already sold 90, right, how much left do I need to sell? 510. And there's only one batch to take out from, which is the peach batch. So in this case, if it helps you, go ahead and uh, color this in with the peach batch. So you know where each batch came from. You got the 90 from the yellow, right, because it's first in, first out, which the yellow batch came first. We made a purchase of the peach batch, Right? But because we eliminated our entire yellow batch, all we have left is our peach batch. So that's the only one that you're taking out from. And in this case, we solved that if we sold, if we need to get a total of 600 and we already sold 90 of them, what is, do we need to take away from our peach batch, which is the 510? Okay? So therefore, in grand total, we should have a total of 600 that we sold. Right? That's what the scenario told, told us. It told us that we had to take out the 600. Okay. So now that we've... The zero yellow, that shows that we took out everything from the yellow one, right? Correct. Like the 850 that we're starting with. Mm-hmm. Cost was that? Was it twenty eight thirty seven fifty? Yes. Ten. Mm hmm. No, it was three forty left. Good. Okay. Right? And then, of course, right here, right, we solved for how much it cost us. It cost us 1702 
simple way to do this, instead of having to calculate the cost per item, you just simply subtract it. And you should know at the end of the day, you should be ending with 1135. Right, because we started with two, um, eight, 37.50, subtract the 1702.50, should get you 1135. Okay. So the great thing about Excel is it allows you to do your calculations a lot quicker. Right. So here we see that we have our peach batch, right? We need to update it now because we no longer have 850. How much do we have left? 340. Type that in, boom, should automatically calculate that I should have 1135 left. And is that correct? Yes. Okay. So are you, are you okay now? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and continue on, right? So now what happened on May 20th? We purchased 300 units at 350 with the freight costing you 20. So here we are. We're going to skip this line right here because it's now May 20th, right? We didn't sell anything yet, but we did make purchases. We purchased 300 at $3.50 each. Oh my gosh, I forgot already. So let's see, 300 at 350 freight costing you 20. Okay, so freight costing you 20. So what is my total purchase price? 1,050, good. Plus my freight to give us a total of? 1,070. And then lastly, what is my cost per item going to be? Three. What was that again? Three point five six 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 seven. Okay. Okay. There you go. I missed the five that you said earlier. So I'm just going to extend it out to see. So just so you know that this is not an even number. Okay. Now. I have a new batch. Let's go ahead and assign a color to it. All right? What color do you guys want this time? Light green. Light green. Perfect. Okay? Light green. So now that we establish that we have a new batch of inventory, right? Next thing we're going to do is we're going to update our inventory by placing it in the inventory on hand. So here I purchased another 300 items costing me a total of three, five, six, 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 seven per item. So if I do my formula, oops, there you go. My formula should be 1070 even, right? And once again, I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to make it green. Okay, so how many batches do we have? Two. Only two. We have a, the peach batch, and we have the green batch. Okay. Okay, everyone good so far? So let's go ahead and go back to our scenario. So what happened next on May 22nd? Sold 450 units. Okay, we sold four. Mm -hmm. We sold an additional 450 units on May 22nd, I believe. Okay. So let's look at our batches. 
We have our peach batch and we have our green batch. We sold a total of 450 items. Okay, so therefore we're going to get eliminate my entire peach batch, right? Because that's all I have left. I need to get to three, I'm sorry, 450, right? So how many, and you said 110? Yes. Okay. So once again, this is going to be a calculated, right? We're taking one from one batch and then another from another batch. So that's my calculated formula, okay? So once again, if this helps you, go ahead and highlight the colors that you need. Uh, not, not the font, this color. I need, I think it was this one. And then we're taking it away from our green batch. Okay. So here, if it helps you, go ahead and pull down that peach information that we solved from our previous section here, right? We pulled down that we should have 340 items left in our peach batch, costing me at a total at 1135. Okay. How many did I sell from the peach batch? All of them. All of it. So therefore, if I do this, I should get zero. Oh, yeah, zero. Okay. Same thing here. If I started out with 1135 and I sold, oh, I didn't fill this in. My total 1135, right? So, right? For 1135 and then I know for a fact that I'm zeroing out this account by just eliminating it right here so I'm just showing proof that I eliminated this amount and by eliminating this amount oops I didn't mean green I meant this color okay if I took out green I did choose the wrong one. I think it's one more down. There you go. If I ended up eliminating 1135, then I should end up with zero, right? So this is proof that right here, I zeroed it out. And I'm going to go up to my inventory on hand and zero this out as well. Okay. So now, what batch do I have left remaining? The green. The green one. Good. So then... I need to sell an additional 110 items from my green batch. So how much does it cost me per item for my green batch? 3.56667. Good. So once again, you're going to have to need to use that equal round formula. Okay. So how much should my green batch for selling 110 items be? For my green batch? No, no, I looked at the wrong line. That's 392.33. You're right, it's 392.33. <laughs> okay, 392.33, right? And we're going to make sure that we add those together, right? Because we want to know how much our total cost of goods sold is, right? When you journalize it, the reason why we don't journalize Batch number one, my green batch, I'm going to sell out or my cost of goods sold for my green batch is going to be those 90 items. No, you got to do it as a grand total value. Remember, that's the rules for the monetary assumption, right? We're trying to sell a total of, a hunt of 450 items. We can't individually base it. We need to go ahead and um, get a grand total of how much cost of the 450 items is going to be. So once again, right? I'm gonna go ahead and pull down my green batch, right? I know for a fact that I started out with 300, 
and it's going to cost me 1070, right? How much did I sell from the green badge? Hundred and ten, right? At what cost? Good. Total cost? Three ninety two. Mm -hmm. So once again, let's go ahead and solve for this. So if I started out with three hundred and subtract out one ten, how much should I have left? One ninety. One ninety. Okay. Same thing here. If I started out with 1070 and I subtracted out 392.33, how much should I have left? 67767. Six, seven, seven, six, seven. Good. Right? And I'm going to highlight this because I know this was all revolving my green batch. Okay. Everyone good so far? Nicole, are you good? Melinda, are you good? Yes. Okay. So now that we eliminated from our green batch, now we have to do is update our inventory. Okay. So here, we, we don't have 300 anymore. How many of the green do we have? 190, which, boom, should calculate as 377.67, okay? So all we have left is our green batch for 190 items, all right? We started off with a yellow batch, a peach batch, and a green batch, and now all we have left right now is just my green batch, okay? <sighs> see okay so what happened next okay all right that's okay um let's continue on for so let's see what happened next. Nicole, are you okay? Yeah. Okay, just making sure you, you got that from the worksheet? Yes. Okay. So my uh, internet went out for a second and I wasn't able, I, my computer froze for a second. Okay, no worries. Good. Okay. I'm good. Okay. So then what happened on May 25th? Is, you guys can all see my screen still, right? Okay, so what happened on May 25th? Uh, we purchased 350 at 375, uh, trade at 50. Okay, so 650. So at 13, 12, 50. Hold on, we're on May 25th. 13, 12, 50. Hold on, where did you get that number from? Oh, for purchase price? Yes. Okay. Price. Okay, hold on. 3650, 375, and what was that? And 136250 for uh, total cost. Uh, am I wrong somewhere? Uh, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, hold on. So you said we purchased 650 items, right? At $3.75 each? Yes. With the freight costing you 50? Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do that again. So 650 times 375. Yeah. How did you get 13.12.50? Did you do 275? Oh, okay. You did 350. Okay. Yeah, again. Okay. Right. I thought he said 350 at first, and I thought, huh? And 
Yeah, so that's where he got it from. Okay. <laughs> Three fifty, yes. All right. All right. All right. Plus my fifty, so twenty four thirty seven. All right, eight point oh, oh, I keep hitting the wrong one. <laughs> my bad. So um, I want to expand my decimals. There you go. Okay, all right. So now that we have a new batch, what color should I associate this batch with? Yep, we've already used yellow. We've already used this peach color. You want to do purple? All right, so we have this purple, and that's too dark. How about this one? Oh man, then I have to find it the next time I find it. <laughs> if, <laughs> so I just want to kind of use the pre selected ones. Okay, so what color you want to see? How about this one? Okay, perfect. Okay, I mean, that's okay. Okay. Can you see this? It's, is, it, is it too, is it perfectly fine? Yes, it's not disrupting to the eye. Okay, so, right, we just purchased a new batch here for 650, okay? Costing me at a total of this 3.8269. So again, I'm just copying and pasting all the information in here. I'm cell referencing it. So therefore, I should have this batch right here for this nice purple right here, this nice light purple, all right, for $24.87.50, which is completely accurate, right? Right, we, have, we already calculated our total cost to be $24.87.50, okay? So now we have two batches, right? We have a green batch and we have a purple batch. Okay. Is everyone okay now? Oh, I always good. I'm good. Okay. All right. So then what has happened next? Let's see what happened next. No sales tax. Okay. So we purchased, or sorry, we sold 740 items at 1025, so 740, 740, 740. So we need to sell a total of 740. And this is now. April, uh, May 28th, 740, okay? So let's take a look at our batches. What do we have available? We have to eliminate our first whole green batch of 190 because that's all we have left. And then we also need to solve for whatever 740 minus 190 is, which gives us how much from our purple batch. Five fifty. So once again, this is a calculation just to make sure that we sell the correct amount of quantity of the seven forty. Okay. So going from our green batch, how much per item or per cost per item is my green batch? 
Mm -hmm. Now, for a fact, because we already know this, right? We already know that my green batch, if I'm going to take all of it, I already know how much the cost of all of it is for, right? But I'm going to go ahead and just do the calculation here just so you guys know where it came from. Okay. So, boom. 677.67. All right. And right away from here, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate that green batch. So, let me go ahead and highlight this so you know this is the green batch. Okay, so once again, I'm going to pull the information from above because I know I should have 190 left, right? And I'm going to be eliminating 190. So therefore, how much should I have left? Zero. Zero. So once again, I know for a fact that I should have 677, 67 left. And I sold 677, 67 so therefore, I should also have the ending balance of zero. And I'm going to highlight this whole thing and just so then we know where these numbers came from, right? I took from the green batch, from the, the my what I started out with, subtract how much I sold to give me an ending balance of zero. Okay? And once again, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to update this saying, I no longer have my green batch. I should only have my purple batch remaining of five or of 650. Okay. All right. So going back to this, I also took away from the 650, right? I actually sold 55 550 from the purple batch. So how much cost per item is going to be each purple batch? $3.82 Okay. Uh, 21.04.80 Hold on. So equal round and multiply these two together comma, two decimal places to get me 2104.81. Is that what you said? No, I, I had 80 cents, not 81, but that's okay. Okay, because, yeah, if you rounded too early, you would have been 80 cents, but I got 81 cents. Anybody else got a different number? 2062. 2062. Okay. Did you round your your um, cost per item? Because if you do um, three eighty three, that's gonna give you twenty one oh six. But in this case, okay, so three twenty eight two six nine. Is that the number that we have? Eight point yes yes three eight two six nine yes. Okay. So what you so you got twenty one oh four eighty one? Twenty four eighty one. Mm-hmm. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So we can we add those two numbers up. So for selling a total of 740 items, you should be 278248. So that's what's going to go on your journal. Okay. So now we need to eliminate from our purple batch because that's all we have left, right? So here I'm going to go ahead and drag down my purple formula my, or my purple information here. And what did I what did I sell? How many items did I sell? 
we sold 550 so then how much should i have left remaining for my purple batch you should have 100 items left good same thing here i'm going to pull down my information that i have 24 87.50 and I subtracted 2104.81 so how much should I have remaining? 382.69 okay and I'm gonna highlight this because this was revolving my purple batch so now that I'm given this piece of information right I should have a hundred left so let's update our inventory if we had 650 and now I'm left with 100, boom. It should calculate, right, the 8.269231, right, times by 100 should give you $382.69. Okay, in my purple batch. Okay, so let's go ahead and double check my scenario, right? On May 31st, I should have 100 items. And do I have 100 items? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. So, boom. So, that is how I go ahead and compute my inventory worksheet, okay? Once again, if it helps you visually to utilize the colors, go ahead and do it. Uh, once again, um, as we progress further and further on, I'm going to eliminate using colors. and I'm going to eliminate doing all the work in the middle. Okay, so once again, um, I'm only doing this so then when I post the answers, it's not a blank worksheet. You're able to follow along of exactly what has happened, okay? So I took it easy. I took step by step, right? I took that the pr this batch is associated with this batch and this batch associated with this batch. So I color-coded everything, including the batches. Now, you may notice this as well, too you're gonna notice that there is no need specifically for colors because if we have everything on inventory on hand, it's already in order, okay? So you're gonna be noticing a lot of things that you'll see that may or may not help you, but in this case, I don't need to use the colors because I'm they're already in the order of my inventory, right? Every time I make a purchase, I place it in there exactly how it's listed, of exactly when did I purchase it, and it's already in order, okay? Uh, but again, once again, I'm going to teach it again using whatever methodology that you guys need to um, help to associate with the next problem, okay? So... We have maybe, maybe we have probably like a good 10 minutes left. So let's go ahead and try to uh, complete the next one. So here we are. Okay. It is now question number two, and we're going to continue from above. Okay. Your inventory me method, once again, is perpetual and it is FIFO. Okay. So this time we know that on by May 31st, you should have had a total of 100 items on hand, okay? So this is where we're going to be transferring from this inventory worksheet to the new one, right? We see here on our inventory on hand that we only have left our, is our 100 items. So we're going to go ahead and transfer that over into our new inventory worksheet just so that we can kind of start from scratch, right? Have a new blank worksheet to work with. So here, I'm going to go ahead and indicate that I have 531, okay? And, of course, I'm going to place this on my inventory on hand, right? I have 100 items, which cost me 3.8269231, right? I'm self-referencing. I'm bringing it over to the other worksheet. And, of course, I'm going to also have the formula here. Uh, which is your quantity times your um, cost per item. In this case, there we are. Okay. And again, for this one, this is one of the exceptions that you can pull the formula down to where it is. And because I associated this as my purple batch, I'm going to go ahead and carry that over as well, just so that I know 
from the previous worksheet moving on to the new worksheet I know exactly where that batch came from it came from my purple batch okay all right everyone good so far all right so let's see what has happened next for scenario number two so what happened on June 5th So 800 for with a freight of 100. So it is June 5th. We purchased 400, oh no, 800 items at $4 each with a freight of 100. So I'm going to quickly format this real quick. So, what is my total purchase price here? Thirty-two hundred. Mm-hmm. So my total cost is my three, two hundred plus a hundred to make thirty-three, and my cost per item is going to be four dollars and twelve cents. Uh, whoa, four point one two five. Perfect. Okay, so this is one of the numbers that you have to be very, very careful for and make sure that your calculations are correct. Because in this case, we have half a penny. Half a penny means that we can either round up on both ends. So therefore, make sure that your calculations is going to reflect correctly. So in this case, I have my new batch. All right, I'm going to transfer it over. So I have a new batch of 800 at $44, and there you go, right? And now since I have a new batch, what color should I color this? All right, so any of the colors that we used previously, you can use again because we're on a new worksheet, right? We There is no red batch, there is no peach batch, whatever yellow batch. From the previous light. one. What was that? Light blue. You want to do light blue? Okay, let's do this nice sky blue right here. Okay, so that is my new batch for 800 light blue. Okay. Everyone good? Okay, so then what has happened on June 7th? We sold 300 for uh, five, $10.50, no sell tax. So 350. Yeah. What was that? Oh, I'm sorry, I was on the wrong sheet. Okay. So 350. Okay, so we are May 7. We sold 350. Okay, let's take a look at our batches. Do we have enough for the purple batch? No, we use it all. No, we're gonna have to use all of it. So we need, a sell, we need to sell a total of 350 and we are eliminating 100. So therefore, how much of the blue batch are we going to be needing? Two fifty, right? So, because we know that we have this, right? So, therefore, this should be a 
right? Eight, oh, sorry, 382.69, right? We eliminate this purple batch right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight it purple because I eliminated this batch here, okay? Just exactly how we had it from above uh, before, right? We're gonna go ahead and, in this case, since I don't have it written up on top, I'm gonna go ahead and just pull the, inf I'm just gonna cop type in the information here, okay? So if we started with 100, and we subtracted out 100, we should have zero, okay? Once again, it cost us 382.69, and we subtracted 382.69. So therefore, we should have zero. And this is my purple bag. Right? So now that I've got rid of my whole entire purple batch, I need to go ahead and update my inventory because I no longer have it anymore. So it is, my purple batch has now became zero. Okay. What about my blue batch? Right, it's the only batch I have left. So what's my cost per item going to be there? Mm -hmm. All right, so equal round. Okay, I did a typo there. So let's do it again, equal round. Okay, 10.31.25, is that what you said, um, Felipe? Okay, perfect. So once again, right, I'm gonna take my batch from above here because that's what I started out with, right? I started out with 800 items, right? I have to sell 250 items. So therefore, what should be my ending quantity for my blue batch? Five fifty, good. So again, the total cost of my eight hundred items should be this thirty three hundred. All right, and if I sold ten thirty one twenty five, then therefore, how much should my ending balance be? Two sixty eight seventy five. Good. So I'm going to highlight this whole section here because this is going to be dealing with all of my blue inventory, right? So once again, now that I'm here and I know what my ending inventory should be, let's go ahead and update my inventory. I no longer have 800. What do I have? I should have 550 left, which... Boom, calculates to me to have 22.68.75. Okay. Everyone good with me so far? Okay. Okay, let's see what happened next. Um, and then we'll pause here and go on break. So here we are, it is now June 10. So what happened on June 10? Purchased 750 at $4.25. Good, $7.50 at $4.25 and $75. So here we Oh, I've been typing in May. 
Okay, so June 10, all right, we skipped the middle section because we made a purchase of 750 items at $4.25 each with a freight of 75, okay? So what's my total purchase price? 31.8750. All right. What's my total cost? 32.6250. And what is my cost per item going to be? Four dollars and thirty-five cents. Even. Yep. Even. Perfect. So now that I have this, what color am I going to associate this batch with? Yellow. Yellow. Okay. So I'm going to pull that information into my inventory work on hand. So I got seven fifty, costing me three point two. Oh, I'm sorry, four dollars and thirty five cents each, which should give me a grand total of thirty two sixty two fifty. Okay. And once again, I'm going to highlight that in yellow okay so right now it is um 3 15 let's go on, let's go on a quick 15 minute break here and we'll come back and finish up the rest of this and at least get you introduced for um three for 8.2 so then um the next day we'll just go ahead and do the exercise and complete the rest uh, of the chapters okay i'm sorry what time we do back Due back at 3.30.